Welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be giving you the step-by-step -step process to attract anything that you want in your life. Let's dive in. Today we're going to be talking about manifesting and I'm going to give you a really simple three-step process to manifest. Now, uh, I promise you this, whether you are a woo-woo-y person or you're an extremely analytical skeptic, this is going to make a lot of sense to you. Um, because I can dance in both sides of them. I can be very woo-woo-y, but I'm also extremely analytical and I'm extremely skeptic and I need proof and all of that. And so, you know, when you look at manifesting, manifesting has become a really popular topic for the past couple of years, I would say. I've been talking about it for years. I've been trying it for years. I remember the first time I really started trying it, I watched the movie The Secret and it was in 2008, 2009-ish, I guess. I would say. And um, I remember I remember sitting there and I was watching it and I was like, all right, this sounds kind of possible, but also seems a little bit frou frou -y, but I could try it. You know, I could, I could, I, I go to school at USF. There's never any parking on that damn campus. I can, it takes me 45 minutes to find parking most of the time. What if I just try to attract and manifest a parking spot? And so I remember I was driving to work and I, I'm sorry, I was driving to school, driving to school. And I was I'm like, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to manifest that spot. I'm going to get there. And there's going to be a spot open right up front. And I'm going to get my parking spot real quick. And I was just like thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. I remember I pulled in, went up to the front. And as I was pulling up, somebody was pulling out. And I was like, no way, no way. I don't believe it. This is a bunch of BS. And then I tried it again and it kept working. And I was like, this is interesting. I wonder if maybe my thoughts actually influence reality. Maybe I am the creator of my thoughts and the creator of my future and the creator of my reality. And as I started doing this, I started becoming, and you know, things would work, things would, wouldn't work. And things started really working in an interesting way. And it was like, man, this can't be like just a coincidence. Like this is more, this is more of a synchronicity. And, you know, like one of the examples that I'll give, I'll give you a couple of examples so you can realize like, yeah, it's not really bullshit. Like it actually seems to be working. And, you know, if you want to be a skeptic and say it's coincidence, no big deal. That's fine. You could do that too. I completely understand. But I remember there was one time where I was on a phone call with my mom. I had first moved to Austin. I had been here for a few months. And to give you an idea, in 2012, I saved up a bunch of money and uh, I went backpacking in Europe for three months. I quit my job. I moved from Florida to Austin and I was at like the last few thousand dollars. I was applying at places I wasn't finding a job. I was applying at places I wasn't finding a job. I had my last few thousand dollars. I remember my mom said, she was like, well, what are you going to do? Like you're on your last, you know, do you have money left? And I was like, yeah, I've got a few thousand dollars. And she said, aren't you worried? And I said, no, I'm not worried. And she's like, why? And I said, because that's not how you attract the thing that you want. I said, I know that I'm going to be getting money in some sort of way very soon. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know it's going to happen. And if I worry, I am not going, I'm basically blocking what will be coming to me. And she's like, okay, cool. Like, <laughs> all right, cool, hippie, right? And so she was like, all right, cool, whatever. And then I kid you not, it was like two, three, four days later at max, I uh, was driving my car and I was driving in the old HR lady, one who was in charge of everything at the, the old company that I was at that I quit basically a year prior, calls me up and she's like, hey, Rob. And I was like, hey, how's it going? I haven't talked to you in a while. And she's like, everything's good. And she's like, hey, are you driving right now? And I go, yeah. And she goes, can you go ahead and pull over real quick? I just got to tell you something. And I was like, uh, okay, I guess I could do that. So I pull over. And she's like, hey, so I just wanted to let you know, we realized that our system made a bunch of mistakes on commissions last year, and we actually owe you some money. And I was like, well, that's pretty awesome. How much do you owe me? And she's like, it's right around $23,000. And I was like, no, there's no fucking way. I was like, you owe me $23,000? And she goes, yeah, I just need your bank information. I'll get it wired over to you today. And I was like, this is crazy because a couple of days ago, I was on the phone with my mom and I was talking about how if I worry, I'm going to be blocking anything that could be coming to me. And I know that I'm going to be okay. I know that I'm meant to be an awesome. I know that everything's going to work out. And I know that eventually money's going to be coming to me. And so really like, is it a coincidence? Maybe. I don't know. But I've had many things happen like that over and over and over again. Not just money, but just many things happen like that where I'm like, hold on. It seems like I'm constantly creating my future. And so you have to understand, if you're going to go on this journey with me, that you are a future creator. We're all artists. We're all creative. If you look at children, children are so freaking creative. You are so creative, it just might have been taken out of you in some sort of way. And I want you to realize that with every thought that you have, you're painting the future every single day 
of what's going to be coming for you. If you look at so many ancient texts, so many ancient texts over and over and over again, say something about the thoughts that you have, the way that you speak and how you create whatever it is that's coming for you next. If you look at the word abracadabra, we think that it's just what a magician says when they pull a rabbit out of a hat. But the actual word abracadabra is Hebrew and it actually means as I speak, I create. As I speak the words from my mouth, I am creating in my reality. Well, what's another version of speaking? Well, speaking in your head is thinking. So as I think, I also create. If you look at the Bible, it says, asking you shall receive. What are you asking for unconsciously in your future at all points in time? You are constantly painting the future, painting a picture every single day. It's a blank canvas. What are you painting? And so, like I said, I'm going to speak to logical thinkers, I'm going to and the, the analytical people, but I'm also going to speak to the real spiritual thinkers out there as well. For the logical thinkers that are out there, we all know what we need to do to create the life that we want. We're probably just not doing it, right? And we are mentally holding ourselves back from taking the action that we need to to create the life that we want. Our fears, our limiting beliefs, our thoughts are getting in the way of us taking the action that we need to in our reality to then create the life that we want. And so following this manifestation, the word manifestation is a way to basically hack your brain to believing that it's possible. If you're very analytical and you don't believe that the universe is conspiring from all angles to help you become more successful and create the life that you want, fine, no big deal. What I'm gonna teach you then through quote unquote manifestation is how to trick yourself into finally believing in yourself so you stop holding yourself back with your fears, your limiting beliefs, and all of that. Okay, now if you're a spiritual thinker, everything in this world is vibration. You are at a certain frequency. You attract the frequency that you are at. And so, you know, if, if you want to actually look at this, like there's it, there's fact that the human brain, the human body, we're always emitting some sort of frequency. We're always emitting from us. That what we think and what we feel and everything is not staying inside of our body. There's a thing, if you've heard of M, uh, EEG machines, EEG machines are the electro uh, encephalograph, I think is what it is. And that's what's stuck to your head so that it can measure your brain waves. Well, there's also one that's called an MEG machine. You can Google it if you want to. It looks like a um, basically a thing that goes around your head, but never actually touches your head, but still measures your brain waves the exact same way that the ones that touch your brain and your head actually do. And so hold on a second. What we're saying is there's a machine that doesn't touch your head, but can measure all of your brain waves. What does that mean is that your thoughts don't even actually stay inside of your head. Your thoughts go out into reality, into the universe. And so if we're all at a certain frequency, and you know, it's approximately from what I've been hearing, is that your brain emits a certain, you know, goes a certain distance. But if you look at your heart, your heart and your, your heart waves and all of that go about 90 times further than your actual brain waves. And so when you look at this, you attract the frequency that you're at. So play along with me for a second. Let's just see how this works, okay? Let's say that you're, you know, maybe you're old school and you're, you remember radios that used to be able to turn, right? And let's say that you're on FM, right? If you're on FM, you're not going to be picking up any AM radio stations. So if you want to flip to an AM radio station, then you might be able to pick up some AM radio stations if you flip to AM. And so maybe what's happening <clears throat> is that I don't have the life that I want, because I've been tuned into the wrong frequency. Maybe I've been tuned into the frequency of victim mindset. Oh, this is happening to me. I'm, you know, I'm only this way because my parents were this way. And I'm, I don't have the life I want because my wife is this way. And I don't have the life I want because my parents did this to me when I was younger. And I don't have the life I want because of the, the government and because, you know, this person got elected and not this person. And maybe the, the frequency that I'm tuned into is I am a victim. And so then the world is happening to me and I will always be a victim if that's the, what I'm going to be tuned into. What I'm tuned into is what I'm going to attract. If I think that I'm a victim, I will always be a victim and I will attract victim-like circumstances into my life. Okay, well, let me flip it over and say, you know what? No, I'm the one that's in control. I am the author. I am the creator of my next reality. I'm creating all of these futures at every single moment. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create the future that I want. I'm going to flip from an AM radio station, being a victim, to an FM radio station, to being in control. And you know what? I'm going to attract the, 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 the life that I want. 
I'm going to change my frequency and say, you know what? I'm not a victim anymore. I'm in control. I'm creating this. I'm going to do what it is that I need to do. And so there's three steps that I really want to go into that will really help you out, okay? The first one is your vision and your belief. You have to be extremely clear on exactly what it is that you want. It's, it, it boggles my mind how often I talk to other people and I'm like, what do you want? And they're like, well, I don't know what I want. And I, don't, I, want, I want to kind of like make a little bit more money. I would like to be a little bit more happier. And I'm like, that's not clear. Like that's like very vague. And so if you're going to get something, maybe you should get very clear on what that thing is. So you've got to get extremely clear on exactly what it is that you want. And then what you've got to do is you have to visualize it every single day. You've got to visualize it and you've also got to feel it every single day, which I think is also, I think is mo the most important part is let's say you say, okay, in one year, this is exactly where I want to be. I want to, you know, make $200,000 this year and I want to uh, take my, to celebrate, I want to take my family on a trip to Italy and we're going to go here and we're going to do this and this is what it would feel like to take my wife and my two children to Italy and to be able to experience it with it and to be able to have that fun. And this is how proud I would feel. And you start to feel it in your body exactly what you want it to feel like. What would it feel like for you to feel that way? And what you're trying to do is you're trying to normalize the life that you want. You're trying to normalize what it would be like to have the life that you actually want. In essence, what you're trying to do, for those of you that are just very uh, analytical thinkers, you're basically trying to brainwash yourself into believing it's possible because too often we think we, we don't believe anything is possible. We don't believe the life that we want is possible. And so we're actually trying to brainwash ourselves into believing it's possible is what we're trying to do. Now, when you have the vision, you get very clear on it, you have the belief and you start to see it every single day and you start to feel it. the point of it is to do it every single day, to brainwash it into yourself so that you go, you know what? I think I could actually do this. And if you've heard me talk about back in 2017, my main goal for the year from January 1st was that my girlfriend at the time, my wife now, we were going to move to Italy and we we're going to be there for six months. And the goal was January, I'm sorry, the goal is July 1st, 2017 will be in Rome. And I wrote it everywhere. It was on, it was on the background of my computer, it was on the background of my phone. It was, uh, we had inside of our bathroom, we had two separate uh, mirrors and uh, two separate sinks. And above my mirror, it said by July 1st, 2017, we will be living in Italy. And I put it everywhere. And I woke up every single morning and I brainwashed it into myself that we're going to be there. And I would visualize it every single day. And I would visualize it and visualize it. And then what I would do is I would go on Google Maps and I would figure out what part of town we were going to live in. It was a part of town called Tristavery. And so I would look at what do the streets of Tristavery look like? And I would go on Google Maps and I would walk the map, you know, quote unquote, walk the streets. It was on Street View. And I would see what it looked like. And I would, I would see what those roads looked like. And I would see what the cobblestones looked like and the bars that were there and the restaurants and what it looked like and the people that were there. And I would visualize myself every single morning walking to a coffee shop that was there from our apartment to the coffee shop. And then what I would do is I would close my eyes every single morning. I would visualize it. I would hold my actual real cup of coffee in my hands. I would smell the coffee. I would taste the coffee. And I would drink the coffee while listening to this audio that was called Streets of Rome. And I would sit there and I would visualize myself walking to the coffee shop. I would visualize myself sitting down outside in the chair drinking the coffee, smelling the coffee, hearing it. And so I brought all of my senses into it every day, every day, every day, every day. And it went from, from within like the January 1st was like, I don't know if it's possible. I got a brand new business. I don't know if I'm going to do this. My, my girlfriend, she doesn't have a business at all. How's she going to make money? How are we going to do this? To by the time we were, it was about, I was about two or three months in, I'd done this 60, 90 days in a row. I was like, we got to go. Like, I'm so excited. I'm so jealous of my future self that I have to be there as soon as I possibly can. And so what did I do? I was so, <laughs> I've rushed so much for us to do it. It went from, I don't know if it's possible to, I'm so jealous of my future self, I need to get there as soon as possible, that we moved there on June 1st, an entire month early, and we figured everything out and it all worked out perfectly. But I brainwashed it and visualized it every single morning. So that's the first thing. You have to have a very clear vision and you have to start bashing that belief into your brain. The second thing is you have to have a strategy, right? So this is the thing that kind of drives me crazy that I don't ever hear is the last two things from people who say manifest is they just uh, sit around and just visualize it's going to fall into your lap. 
Okay, well, now let's get analytical. How are you going to do it? Plan it out, put it in detail, put it out the next year, the next 10 years, whatever it is, and then chunk it all down. Make it easier to digest, but don't take too much time. This is what I need to do in order to do X, Y, Z. And you create the actual strategy to do it. And then you just take action on it. And you start to change your strategy. So like for people who are over planners listening to me, you know, you know, you're the type of person where like you plan and then you plan to plan and then you plan to plan to plan and you plan to plan to plan to plan to plan to plan to plan. And all you do is plan all day long. You never actually do it. You've got to start to go along with what I call ready, fire, aim, which is you get ready. You make a little bit of a plan, fire, take action, screw it up and then aim, move it again. And oh, you missed. All right, go a little bit this way. Go a little bit that way. Not ready, aim, fire, ready, fire, aim. You make a little bit of a plan, you take some action, you screw things up, and then you you just readjust your sights a little bit. And so what you do is you actually come up with a legitimate strategy, a legitimate plan of exactly how you're going to do it. So that's number two. And the third thing is execution. This is the part that drives me crazy when I hear people talk about manifesting. The law of action is a part of the law of attraction. If you actually look at the last six letters of attraction, it's action. So most people sit around, they're like, I'm going to attract the light. And for those of you guys that can't see me, I'm going to attract the life that I want. And my eyes are closed and I'm just sitting here. And I think that if I do nothing, but if I sit here, money's just going to flow into me and I'm just going to collect checks inside of my bank account. No, you got to get off your ass. The universe, I don't know how it works, but I do know that nothing happens in this universe until you make it happen. People don't create the future that they want because they're just sitting and they're not, they think that it's just going to come to them. They think that it's just, it's just going to happen. No, you've got to actually go out there and make it happen. And so, yes, you have to set yourself to a certain frequency. You have to sit there. You have to have a very clear vision. You have to believe. You have to believe. And here's the, the, the part that I'm, I'm sorry, but I left out in the believing part. You have about 40 trillion cells in your body. When I say believe, and to manifest, you have to get all 40 trillion of your cells to know, not to think, but to fucking know that what it is that you want is going to get it. And you've got to tune all 40 trillion of those cells to be like heat seeking missiles. I'm going to get this. I'm going to create the life that I want. So people don't create their future that they want. Well, they don't create the future they want because they're not going out to get it. They're not believing it. They're not fully on board. They don't have a strategy to, in order to do it. And so when you look at people and, they, and they're and they not creating the life that they want, usually they're not taking the action that they need to and they're not creating the habits. You know, we create habits and our habits create our future. What do your habits look like? Do they align with the execution that needs to happen in order to create the life that you want? And so really it's not that hard. You've got to You've got to brainwash yourself. First off, you have to get really clear on what it is that you want. Then you have to brainwash yourself and brainwash all 40 trillion of yourselves to know that what it is that you want is exactly what you're going to get. Then you've got to develop a plan. You've got to get a strategy together. How are you going to do it? And then the third thing is you got to get off your ass. You got to take some action. The law of attraction, the very next step to the law of attraction, the law of action. The universe awards people who take massive action. I promise you this, the universe does not award people who just sit around and do nothing. When you get up, you do something, you take massive action, you're going to notice that you start attracting things very, very quickly. And so that's what I believe. I have a lot of proof in my life that this has happened to me and I've been able to create many things that I really do love and I only saw in visions years ago. Uh, but I believe it for you too. I don't believe that I'm better than anybody else at this. I don't believe that I'm more talented at it. I just think that I've been doing it a little bit longer. I think that it lives inside of you and it lives inside of every other human that's out there. It just might be lying dormant inside of you. And so it's like, how do you get that part of your brain, that part of your body, all of those cells to know that you create every single future at every single second? You've just got to be very clear and intentional on what it is that you want to create. Get your entire being on board to attract that thing and then go work towards and create it. So that's the three-step process to manifest anything you want. If you love this episode, please share it on your Instagram stories. Tag me in it, Rob Dial Jr., R-O-B-D-I-A-L-J-R. Also, if you're out there and you happen to be on Instagram, you could probably follow me out there. We have a few videos that have done quite a few million views in the past um, about month or so. And so um, join us on there. If you like this podcast, you'll definitely like some of the stuff we, I post on Instagram as well. And uh, with that, I'm going to leave the same way I leave you every single episode. Make it your mission to make someone else's day better. I appreciate you and I hope that you have an amazing day.